Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will study the vertebra bones, their bony features. So, today's topic would be thoracic vertebra because we are studying the thoracic region. A brief overview is that basically your spine or your vertebral column is made up of 33 vertebras. And in the 33 vertebras, there are about 12 thoracic vertebra. And apart from the thoracic vertebra, there are 7 cervical vertebra, uh, 5 lumbar vertebra, 5 sacral vertebra. And finally, the four coccygeal vertebra. So today, we will cover the main features of your thoracic vertebra. As you can see, there are multiple types of thoracic vertebra. Of these, there are two types of a thoracic vertebra. The two basic types are the typical and the atypical. The typical thoracic vertebra basically are the second to eighth thoracic vertebra. And the atypical thoracic vertebra are all of the rest that are left out. So that is the first, the ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth thoracic vertebra are the atypical ones. So out of all of these, this is the typical vertebra. So I will exclude all of these out for now as they are atypical. Here is an example of a typical thoracic vertebra. So now let's study the bony features of these thoracic vertebra. The thoracic vertebra anteriorly consists of the body. In a typical vertebra, it's mostly heart-shaped. The body posteriorly is the vertebral or the neural arc. And how is the neural arc or the vertebral arc formed? Let's see. Extending posteriorly from the body are the two pedicles. These go posteriorly backwards, after which the lamina are formed. The lamina are extending from the pedicle all the way behind. The main opening in the middle of the thoracic vertebra is for the passage of spinal cord. This is known as the intervertebral foramen of the vertebra. At the junction of the two laminas is in the midline a spinous process as you can see here. The spinous process is basically the meeting point of the two laminas in the midline. Now where the pedicle is going to meet the lamina, there are processes formed at this area. As you can see from here and here, the two processes that are formed where the lamina and the pedicle meet, the most important one is the process that extends laterally at this junction. It is known as the transverse process, which is occurring on either side. And the process that goes above is known as the superior articular process while inferiorly there is an inferior articular process you can see it from the lateral view as well this is the inferior articular process this is the superior articular process this is the transverse process this is the spinous process it is important to know that in the superior articular process and the inferior articular process there are facets so that the vertebra can make joints with each other. The inferior articular process of the vertebra above forms a joint with the superior articular process of the vertebra below. So that is the main point of these articular processes. They have facets as well. Moving on, the transverse process has facets as well and the body of the vertebra has facets too. What are these facets for? Well, it is for the rib articulation. The rib has a tubercle and it has a head. The head of the rib goes and articulates with the facets present on the body, while the tubercle of the rib articulates with the facet at the anterior part of your transverse process. Of note is that the transverse process facet in the upper six vertebra are concave while in the lower four vertebra these facets are flat and finally in the 11th and 12th thoracic vertebra these facets are completely absent now let's talk about the facets that exist for articulation of ribs in the body of your vertebra there are two facets on the body on either side so in total there are four facets these are known as the superior costal demi facet 
the inferior costal demi facet. So it's basically a facet or you can say a rounded area for the articulation of rib. And these are demi facets, meaning they are half a facet. They are not complete circles. They are semicircular or hemispherical. This is because the rib that attaches is going to attach right here at the junction of the two vertebra. It's going to attach. That's why they are demi facets because half the rib is going to be articulating with one vertebra and half of it with the one above. So for example, this is T2, this is T1 and the rib that is basically articulating with the superior costal demi facet, the number of that rib will correspond to that vertebra. So for example, this is T2, hence this will be the second rib. And the rib that articulates with the inferior demi facet, then you have to give it the number, the lower rib. Now let's talk about other bony features. Apart from this, the area between the demi facet or the body uh, right before the superior articular process is the superior vertebral notch and the one below is the inferior vertebral notch. As you can see, there is an arc formation. This is the, these are the two notches. These notches are important because when the two vertebra are joining, these notches are the sole reason there is a space between these two vertebra which allows the passage of the spinal nerves. So as you can see, this is the inferior vertebral notch and the superior vertebral notch right between these two comes out the spinal nerve. Obviously, because the spinal cord has to give out nerves. So that's about it for the bony features of a typical thoracic vertebra. In the next video, I will elaborate more about the typical vertebra and then we will talk about the atypical vertebra.